as we know, in the winter time, uh, the grayling quite often frequent the bottom, the bottom of the river. Um, they will come up to the top, but 99% of the fish you catch will be down near the um, down near the bottom of the river. So here we've got a jig style hook. So it's designed to fish um, upside down, uh, keeping the point of the fly away from the riverbed. Uh, there's lots of different reasons why that's good, uh, particularly for grayling. Uh, one is it stops the point dulling um, because these flies will be bouncing along the bottom of the river, hitting the stones. So quite often you'll find that the shine will go off the bead uh, as it's bashing the bottom. Um, but more importantly, the hook point's not bouncing the bottom. So it means that your hooks stay sharper for longer. Um, also, your hook point's facing away from any structure on the bottom, meaning that you don't snag up the bottom as much. You still will. Uh, you'll lose flies doing uh, fishing for grayling. Uh, and the other thing, the way that the grayling feed with their downturned mouth and how they pick food up, you get a much better hook hold with a fly that fishes um, in, in reverse, so with the hook point facing up. Um, so you'll find a lot of grayling anglers will fish uh, the shrimp patterns, which we looked at before, which will actually fish that way in the water, uh, or jig hooks, which will also fish in reverse, rather than your standard straight eye um, pheasant tail type fly, which will fish hook point down, uh, and you'll get a much better trout hook hold. Um, so it's worth just thinking about that when you're targeting different fish. Uh, so this particular fly is called the bootlace jig. Um, it's a pattern that I tie a lot. I call it the bootlace jig because originally I tied it with an old bootlace. Um, but actually, um, it, it's, a, it's an orange tag. It's been around um, for a long, long time. Uh, tied with a silver bead. Um, this has been incredibly effective um, in recent times as I've gone more and more over to different color beads. Um, silver just seems to sort of capture the heart of trout, grayling, uh, and a whole manner of other, other species. Uh, this time our thread is the Black Nano Silk by Semperfly in 18.0. Uh, it's just a good general purpose thread. I like the low diameter always and the strength of it. Uh, we've started the thread behind the bead there and we're taking it all the way back down to the end of the shank almost in line with where a barb would be on a barb hook, um, but just before the, um, the shank begins to go into the bend. Uh, then we're going to get our tailing material, which this is a, a floss. Uh, this is the Semperfly Fluorobrite um, in orange, in a bright orange, uh, so number seven. Um, most flosses will do the the job for this, I know many people will tie with uni floss or um, such. But what you want to do, obviously that will give you quite a thin strand, is then once you start doubling it up, um, you'll, you'll obviously build its bulk then. And what I will tend to do is have it so it's now a sit strand piece. And to tie it in, use the weight of the bobbin, as we've discussed before, and just use that bobbin to anchor it in on top of the, the shank. Put your pressure on and your locking turns. And then you can tidy it up very quickly by winding this forward to the eye. Let's get just short of, of the bead and cut the tag that we don't need, a little bit long, and then shuffle it down and you'll find that it will go straight into the slot in these slotted tungsten beads. And it'll be hidden and it helps just keep that uniform body shape all the way along. And then we can cut our tag to the sides. So I like it to overshoot the bend of the hook. So roughly Roughly about a third of the shank length. A bit longer. 
uh, it's personal preference on, on length. Um, I tend to have them quite short. Uh, I know other people will fish them much longer. And now I've got a needle, um, but you can use a, a brush or anything just to open out those strands and turn it into, rather than being six individual strands, we'll turn it into one big tag. Can be a little bit of a faff. And I've got a screaming baby upstairs, which is always fun. Um, there we go. So we've got the tag in place going and now we're going to add in our rib material so this time uh, we've got a two two mil wire uh, this is a red wire and I particularly like uh, reds and oranges as well as the pinks so bright colors which just seem to to grab the fish's attention so I've got my wire here to tie it on I'll actually poke it up into the slot in the bead that just helps grip one side of it and then wind it down to where the tag begins and that's your rib in place and now we're going to add the body material so we've got the Semperfy super fine dubbing in black uh, it's quite a long strand dubbing, um, so actually what I tend to do is just pinch it and tear it apart at this point because the benefits of the long strands um, are great for getting a really fine um, dry fly profile. Uh, here I want a slightly more buggy profile, so I want some shorter fibers, uh, but the great thing with super fine dubbing is it's so easy to use. Uh, start with a thin thin bit that's going to go by the shank of the hook but don't dub everything start your turns and now you can start tightening up along that whole length and building it forward and you want it to taper slightly as you go forward whether the fish mind is anybody's guess but as a flighter I feel I'm doing a better job if I've got a Good nymph shape. So it's a nice little tapering profile. And now we're going to take our rib and we can wind with the dubbing with just segments that are growing ever so slightly wider as you turn forward until you get to the furthest forward. Two or three turns behind and full of turns in front and then just rotate that round there and it will break itself out. Save your scissors, don't cut wire. And there we have it. We've got the body in place. Now we're going to add in a hackle. Uh, but not the traditional hackle. This is now CDC, um, which has become incredibly popular in uh, particularly jig nymphs for grayling. Uh, the great thing with CDC fibers is they give you a lot of movement because they hold air and they're buoyant. They, um, they'll move around a lot when they're subsurface. So even when you're fishing a dead drifted nymph, there's leggy movement going on. Uh, and that can appeal to fish when just a standard non non hackled nymph isn't working. So I've prepared this by stroking the fibers forward, uh, backwards, uh, the tip is forward and I'm just going to tie the tip in first. Tie that down, show the tip back and then just the tip of the CDC out with my thread then I'm going to find where I've lost my hackle pliers place that on the tag end of the CDC feather 
and begin to wrap it around the hook here. So you want a relatively good seeded sea feather with plenty of fibers. And take that up. Usually two turns is more than enough. You don't want it to be too heavily dressed with seeded sea, otherwise it then become stops the fly sinking as quickly. And when you get through, take your thread through the feather a couple of times. Like all materials, take it a couple of times in front and clip that out. So we've got our nice straggly legs here. So push them back, make sure none of them are being caught forward and tidy that up with a few thread turns. What I do here is stroke them back and just pinch out any really long ones. Uh, and I want it to overshoot the tag a little. And that gives us our nice collar hackle. And then we're going to go in with the Thorats now, uh, which is um, the Micro Flash Dubbing by Hens. Uh, this is a black color and uh, number 435. And we're just going to add a small bit of this at the front. Uh, it keeps the fly's color um, the same, uh, but just adds a little bit of flash in behind that silver bead. Um, I feel it just, again, adds a, another little element to the fly. Uh, the micro flash, and that's easy dubbing to use. And we want just enough that it ants. Tidies up that front area. Uh, ants in a bit of flash. It gives us somewhere to hide the thread between the fly and the bead. And then go in with the whip finish tool between the thorets and the bead. Um, easiest way to do this, rather than try and get the thread perfectly in there, you can let it place it on the bead and just let the bead slide it into place. And there you have it. The orange tag or the bootlace jig, uh, another great winter grayling pattern, uh, particularly in coloured water, but works very well in clear water as well. Uh, so definitely one uh, you should have in your box. Uh, and slightly different color versions of this also work well for trout. Uh, you can do red tag versions as well. Uh, so a great all-round pattern.